Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hey there, welcome back to Mac Break Studio. I'm Mark, I'm with Steve. We're talking Final Cut Pro 10 like we like to do. We do. And uh, today, Steve is going to tell us all about... A little bit about keying in Final Cut Pro 10. Key, a green screen keying, blue yeah. screen keying, that kind of well, thing? Well, green screen because most people that are shooting video tend to shoot, shoot on green, green, not blue. Yeah. So shoot somebody on a green background in order to take that background away and stick something else Yeah, there. exactly like the background behind us. We're not actually yeah. standing behind yeah. a blue field. I, I don't know if they can actually take away oh. what you usually see to see the green, but... That would be awesome, yeah. yeah we're we're cool. saying green screen. So uh, Final Cut Pro, uh, since version 10.0.0, I, I can't believe I associate. That's amazing. You remember <laughs> yeah. that what happened in the version. They they brought out what's called a one click or one step adaptive keyer. Yes. Now what does that mean? Adaptive. Adaptive simply means that Final Cut Pro in one step will choose the not only choose the right color but choose the best range of color in uh -huh. one click. So a lot of times you can get that key looking pretty like 80, 90 percent close just by just by dragging the just filter by dropping on. it on it. The, yeah, the dragging the uh, I should say the the, the keyer. effect, the, the keyer. effect, yeah, the keyer effect. So um, my kids, uh, my my daughter Rachel and her friends were shooting a YouTube show that'll be um, coming out in September, and uh, this is one of the shots from the show. And you could see this particular shot presents its own particular uh, challenges. She's got. You know, this yeah, a lot of lo a lot of hair blowing in the a lot wind of hair. here, uh -huh. and then you also have um, this hot spot it's here. Good, right, that's because we they had one light essentially light the green screen, and okay. that's a whole subject into itself. Yeah, but uh, this is definitely has his, his challenges. So um, I'm going to do is select the clip, and I'm going to go over to the keyer section here. So uh, just before we actually yeah. apply it, just to, so for people who might have any background, yeah. usually what you want to do, and in fact, if they're able to show it here, you want to your background color to be as evenly lit as possible, evenly right? lit, yes. And also as far away from the subject as possible to stop that light from well, bouncing back on them, ideally. Exactly. Right? So um, it, the, basically, if, you're, if, you're, if you have a 10-foot wall that's got green screen, you want to keep your subject five feet away from the wall, generally speaking. Okay. The, and uh, in this case, um, we, we, we did that as much as possible. You want to yeah. do... That's again a whole other subject. So, but, but the only the point is that the the keyer here, even if you have an, a non-optimal situation, can often do a fantastic job. A fantastic right? job, right? So, what I'm going to do is just grab this. Uh, and I, by the way, I already have the background uh, applied. And okay. it's, but oh, you'll you have see a it. background clip connected underneath. Yeah, it's a black okay. background clip connected, and you'll okay. see it instantly once I grab. And you're in the effects browser. In the effects browser. In the keying category. Right, and okay. I'm skimming. You can see it already. Well, just by skimming, you can see. That's You can see it's already keying. Again, yeah. It's adaptive keying already. So you haven't even applied it. You're even just applied skimming it. over. Right. And you can see the, the hot spot going on there. Exactly. Um, but it's a very good key of, of right. the talent. Now you can double click. I just like to drag and drop. So just don't. Just like that. Okay. And so, like I said, one click keying. You're very, very already close. Pretty already darn good. already uh -huh. pretty darn good. So I'm gonna just let's look at that. So now we want to go into the inspector and, and look at all of this stuff in here. And there's a huge one thing they added in ten point oh point three, I think, was was adding all the controls that you have in, in motion, motion right. are now available. They in added a they added actually an advanced okay. keying section, which yeah. is hidden by default because a lot of times you don't you even don't need, need to go to, there, you don't even need right. to go in here. Um, you just don't. Um, we could talk a little bit about it, and that would be again a whole subject. But you can get away with just using the controls up here because again, the keyer is so good. Does built a pretty into. good job, uh, yeah. The so, gate. so, so first thing is, it's always I always like to take a look at the mat. See what does a mat look like because that's the, the that's going to show you kind of what's being removed and what's being kept. Give you the, yeah. the true story, the true okay. picture. Not what your eyes are telling you, but what actually is happening. So if I click the map button, you can see here, um, I, I got a pretty good key, but that hot spot is like showing up in areas of like light gray up here. You can see it showing up down here in the corners. Yeah. And I, and I can actually improve this key even more. So ideally, the whole background is completely black and your subject's completely white. Right, you want, this, this area black is, is supposed to be the transparent areas. Yes. That the keyer, and by, the, by default, Final Cut Pro applies what's called an automatic key. This is the automatic key that's defined by this slider right here, the strength slider. And by default, it's set at 100%. So it's so fully it's automatic. Fully, in other words, it's uh, Final Cut is basically saying, I'm going to pick the best pixel and the best range of pixels and yeah. give you the best key, and I'm going to give you the maximum amount. So without doing anything else, th what this does is, notice as I start backing off on the strength, notice what's happening. I'm, uh, it's keying less and less out. Keying less and less out. And normally, according to the manual, they say that the reason you would use this is you want to start retrieving more detail in the hair and yeah. stuff, but 
This particular shot has a problem because we have that really hot spot. This is a very challenging uh, yes. um, green screen to keep for for that for that very reason. So, mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to just leave it at a hundred percent, right? Or somebody maybe around. So maybe right around there, maybe around eighty percent, because I could still see a lot of hair detail yes. right here. So pull a little more hair detail, but you still have that little area. And these areas in the corners, you could map those, those out. Those could be right? mapped. In fact, you brought up a really good point. I, I, if I get some areas in the corners, I don't care so much about. It. I care mainly about the subject. That yeah. all that stuff in the corners can all be matted out using um, using Ripple Tools One with the oh, little, little garbage, yeah, little garbage, garbage map. map, yeah, yeah. Or there's there is a built-in map, but yeah. it's just four corners. So this is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to refine the key. That's what this section is. You, I can refine the key, the sample. I can work what's called the core mat. Yes. That's what this is, and then the edges, because the key is defined in, as, as as a core transparency the main transparency that you're yes. trying to achieve, and then the edge transparency. So that's okay. why you have two separate controls. So what I'm going to do is just get click the sample color, and it turns red. And I'm just going to move this little box, this little cursor in here. And, it, and there's a few things. You want to try to get as close to the subject as possible yeah. when you're making a selection. But I'm just going to click, and I'm just going to drag through here. And look, it boom, just, right away. just, just knocks it. them out, just kills you, it. You kept the hair detail, kept, look at the, the, but you got rid of that little uh, hot spot. No, I could I could get click this again and say, uh, look, I want to remove this over here. Or at and least this, the stuff that's look, closest yeah, to oh, her. Look at that. But see, I, when I did that, hair detail. it starts yeah. affecting hair detail. So I got it's so it. dark down so, there. So exactly. So this is where you might want to get in. Maybe just maybe just to see a little, yeah, you can just, you could pull this out and go in. And I, all right, let's just leave it there for a moment. Yeah. Okay. Because you could map that out too. Because, because again, I, I'm good. liking the, the hair detail thing, and this could all be matted out. Yeah. So that's just one one thing. Um, the other thing is edges. You know, the soft, this is what this, remember, so you have the core and then you have the edge transparency. Right. So I'm going to select this uh, uh, edge refine uh, key button. And what this allows you to do is basically tell the keyer. These are these are portions along the key that I want to keep, and these are portions that I want to be selling along the edges. That, exactly, that's where this fine detail in the hair. You really want some mixture of transparency. It's not otherwise you have a really hard edge, and you that's, want kind of a soft that's right. edge. So I'm just going to click. You can dra drag across here. You can see as I go too far. If I go at certain points, that you can start to see like, um, some of the opacity go away, and we start we start getting transparent areas inside in, your inside subject. the core mat, which we don't. Yeah. So we want to just try to find a, a happy medium with this, with this little slide or with this little these little balls here. So and like you can right you can there. drag them out. You can always drag that middle one in to sort of yeah, adjust then, it a little bit. In fact, bit, right? let me zoom in just a little bit. This controls the amount of like op opacity or opaqueness between the edges. So you can see here. So I want to I want a little bit. I want it a solid in here, but I want it soft and uh, translucent and through here. You can mm -hmm. actually see little strands of hair. In here now, you're not going to get every little tiny strand of hair. Yeah. That's just unless you've got a really perfectly lit kind of right. background to, exactly. be able to do that. Because those the really fine hair details being wrapped in green, mm -hmm. green light bouncing off of that. So, so I'm just let's go back to the composite view, which is this button here. So we can just see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and click this composite view, and I just I'm pretty impressed with. The fact that I mean, look at all that hair detail. Yeah. I mean, it's and the nice thing, there's no green in it at all. Well, so what's going on? Because there's no, I, you know, I know you're there's getting no fringing. Some there's yeah. no green. Well, why yeah. is that? Because again, Final Cut Pro's algorithm is, is pretty brilliant. They actually included. They actually by default are applying a 46 percent. Uh, so it spill automatically level. figured out how much spill suppression to add. It did. In other words, how much magenta color to add to the green to kind of neutralize it out. Okay. Right, and so. Let's just say, so let's go the, all the way the other way, and you can see by doing oh, now that. Now you're starting to get the green fringe. Now you're starting to yeah. see the green fringing, yeah. and I go back the other way, and if I go too far, she'll go really magenta hair. Yeah, she started to get kind of. So I think it was around 40 there. something, 46. 46% right around there. Yeah, it did a very good it job. Did a, of doing it did that. an amazing job. It did an amazing job. Um, so I get this, this key here, and I want to go to the. The thing, of, the thing about doing a key is that if the subject moves through the scene, yeah. or maybe she's turning, or uh, the light changes uh, in some way, uh, kind of challenging. And, and before you had like figure out how to keyframe that, Final Cut Pro does this automatic sampling and keyframe the samples over time for you. So one one thing you're saying is once you key, we only keyed one frame one of this frame. whole yeah, clip, just one and you frame. really need to look at the whole you thing. Need to you to need to make scrub. Sure you good. absolutely do. So I'm going to scrub to this other marker right here. So. So I'm going to go to here. In fact, let's put it back into map view, just so you mm -hmm. can see. Um, you can see the, 
some changes over here. So like right about here, right? You can see, still a pretty good key, but yep. I'll, I'll, my point is, let's say at this point, I wanted to uh, add some more sampling. So I'm gonna go over here and grab this sample. And um, I gotta be very careful because I'm pretty happy. Maybe with you this just key. want to do the edge detail and, and right. just bring a little more detail into the into the hair. And the so edges. maybe I want to, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. So that actually created a little more detail. It, it was finer, but it also added some. Uh, it brought the highlight. Yeah. Back so, in there, yeah, right? add, yeah. So I added more detail. But now I got to deal with this. So it's almost like Final Cut Pro. I anchored the transparency. Yeah. With that edge. So now you got really now, nice now gonna, hair detail. Right. Now I'm gonna go back yeah. to the sample color and just. Boop, and look at that, it kept the, the uh, samples I made along the edges. So that is really cool to me because even though you went to a further place, you were to bring out more detail in the hair, and then when you went to, it, it created an issue on the background. It did. But you were able to key out the background without having the hair go back to the way it was before. Now, what's amazing, and this is what's amazing, it says jump to sample. Yeah. This is like little keyframes. So the first sample they took, initially I can yeah. jump back, there's, that first sample. Oh, you're jumping back to that I'm first I'm jumping marker. out to the yeah. right, first marker, and there's a second. So what, what Final Cut does is it automatically interpolates between those samples from one point to the other so over time. So it's animating the key per, the keying parameters so it keeps a clean key. It's actually animating nice. the key nice. parameters okay. over time. Okay. And without have you having to set any keyframe. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this keyer. So I'm gonna throw it back into composite mode so we can see. Um, so I'm gonna just play a little bit of this, like from here to here, and this is just, it's not even rendered, but you can see, look at it, you can see the hair detail, and it's just. And this is like a 1080p. It's 1080p. Yeah, and this is the other thing I like, is you're just playing. You never think about rendering. You never, yeah, what, what's rendering, yeah. exactly. I, I have to say, I'm, look, look at this, where is it? Um, see, look at, I, you're, again, you're not gonna get every piece of hair, but look, look at this, I mean, you're getting, <laughs> yeah, Little tiny pieces of, of hair. Does does an amazing, amazing, amazing. Did I say amazing? You no, did. Say amazing. Uh, yeah. Job uh, for King for for stuff like this. What I like about it is uh, my daughter and her friends when they're making the show, they're not going to sit there and they're going to tweak you know every possible keyframe parameter. Um, right. They're just going to go and use these tools and, and get a, a really nice looking key. And the only thing you would do to finish it up is throw on that that mask and mask out these corners. Yeah, just mask out the corners. Because there's no reason, and if you try to key those corners out, it'll ruin your your very nice key there. Yeah. So you can just mask those yeah, out. Yeah, we're not going to do that. I just okay. my main point in this episode yeah. is just to show you how using the basic tools how you can really get achieve a good looking, good looking key. Very cool. And we actually have a, a full um, tutorial on compositing in Final Cut Pro yeah. 10. In fact, it's called compositing in Final Cut and, Pro 10. Yep. And it part of that focuses on keying and all kinds of other compositing you can do in Final Cut Pro 10 yeah. at RippleTraining.com. So, Steve, thank you. Awesome. And thank you once again for watching.